Hello and welcome everyone. It's Tara Van Cleve here with your fast track headlines in AI and database coming to you in just 30 minutes from Oracle Developer Coaching News Edition. Before we jump in, a quick reminder to drop your questions in the Q&A anytime. After the presentations, you'll get to vote in our live poll for which ones we tackle first. I'm pleased to introduce today's experts, Chris Rice, SVP of Software Development, Jeff Smith, Distinguished Database Product Manager, and Sherry Chow, Senior Manager of Oracle AI and Analytics. So let's get right into the top stories. First up, live from New Hampshire, we have Chris, and joining us from North Carolina, we have Jeff. So Chris, Jeff, the floor is yours. So last month, in case anyone missed it, we released an MCP server for Oracle. Uh, there's a full video of the webinar we did last month that explains it out a bit more, and it's got some context of what MCP is. Uh, you know, the crux of it, it's nothing more than an API. It takes JSON in, it takes JSON out, but it's a standardized API across many, many AI systems. <clears throat> so the interesting thing we did is we actually took that and incorporated it into SQL CL, and SQL CL itself now is an MCP server for Oracle. Um, you can see here on the slide, there's a number of quotes from different analysts. We had a very uh, high interest from analysts. Uh, as anyone can imagine, this topic is super hot. So MCP is kind of eating the news right now, at least in my feeds. I don't know about everybody else. But it's it's a very dominating topic on the potential of what it enables. So take a look. Uh, it's very simple to get up and going. If you have SQL Developer VS Code, it's implicitly added in for Copilot. So your Copilot, if you go into agent mode on Copilot and take a look, you'll already see SQL CL registered. If you're using anything else like Klein or Roo or Cursor or Windsurf or Claude Desktop, it's very simple to get that up and running as well. So on this, I did a quick I think it was 15 minutes or so. I did a chat with Bob Evans, the guy behind Cloud Wars. Uh, and we talked about a whole bunch of things, you know, from spelling MCP correctly. I guess they get it in the typo uh, in the title there. I, I just noticed it. I don't know why I didn't see that before. It's not MPC, MCP. Um, but we did a quick chat, you know, what's going on, where it's going. Uh, I don't think I gave away too much, but I did tease that we've got a lot more coming and come to AI world and of course, hunt Jeff down, hunt I, me down, hunt us down and we can show you what's coming. We'll have a talk on roadmaps. We'll have hands on labs so you can try the stuff out um, and give the give the video with Bob a, uh, a view. It's only again, 10, 15 minutes, somewhere around there. It's a good conversation back and forth on where it's going, why what we did is different, why why we did what we did and where it's all headed. So then the one thing I mentioned in when we went live <clears throat> was that we have lots of things in plan. So we want to roughly keep this train going on MCP enabling things. And it doesn't necessarily mean things in the database. So if you look at this URL, right, it's GitHub Oracle MCP. So <clears throat> this is going to be a concentration point for the entire company. So uh, we already have some folks from Gen AI that are going to be contributing, obviously database folks. Uh, actually, right now, you know, August 12th, there's a merge coming in from uh, someone in Japan for doing pricing. So you can get access to OCI pricing uh, through MCP. So hopefully we'll have that merged by the end of the day. But then you'll basically be able to, you know, fire up your, your uh, client of choice and start asking it questions. You know, what would it cost if I have a, a best practice layout of an architecture of a web tier app? And it, you know, presumably will say, oh, you need a load balancer. You need minimum two compute nodes for your mid tiers, probably three for load balancing and HA purposes, right? Hooked up to an autonomous database and no more uh, manual clicking in the OCI calculator like I do all the time when people ask me these questions. But you can actually just start using, you know, natural language to uh, pricing. And this is all, that one specifically, 
uses the published, it's on the OCI docs. There's a, there's actually a JSON file. I didn't know it until I saw the guy do a, the PR request. There's actually a JSON file of the entire thing out there. So he pulls that down, you know, and gives access to the LLM. So point there is simply, this isn't going to be database only. This is going to be company wide. Now, specifically what Jeff has up there in the slide right now, right, is one for the database. So if anyone is on OCI, if you go under developer services, we have something out there called database tools. So that database tool service allows you to have SQL developer, you know, the worksheet, the object navigator, all that stuff inside the console, no punch out, no nothing. And of course, it's operating on connections to databases inside OCI. So what this MCP server does, again, without reading the list of things down there, right, is you connect up to the OCI control plane, you list out your compartments, you can list out your connections. And then there's a couple bigger topic, higher level things that are in there. For example, create a vector column and do the embeddings for this table. So you can do all of that through, you know, natural language from a Claude, a Klein or whatever, just by hooking up this MCP server. So keep an eye on this one. And I'm recruiting as many as people and as many teams as I can to start contributing. Hopefully it grows very fast. Yeah. Our, this service and the server also supports MySQL Heatwave in OCI as well. Yes, actually, good point. There is a PR pending from the MySQL team to add uh, deeper MySQL support as well. Okay, so let's talk about uh, core database features. So 23 AI is our current latest and greatest version of the database, and we're producing uh, release updates every two months. Um, the latest version is 23.9. Um, it's got some pretty significant um, changes in it, uh, primarily around this database authentication, which I'll talk about in a second. 23.9 was made available at the end of July, so it's fresh off the fresh off the presses. Um, we're continuing to do more um, additions to the SQL uh, implementation um, based on the ANSI standards. So uh, you'll see this item here for non-positional insert into set syntax. So I can do an insert into by name instead of explicitly listing the column names for our insert. It can mean it can uh, just take those off the select list. So insert as select should be easier. So that's a, that's a little change, but that kind of just sits on top of all of the other developer-friendly changes that 23.9 um, has seen over time. And then uh, for folks that are enjoying the ability to run uh, JavaScript inside the database, um, either uh, sort of like in an anonymous mode or using stored um, procedures, We've made it a bit easier. So we no longer have um, this requirement to grant someone to execute on JavaScript privilege in 23.9. Um, at least if you want to do um, uh, multilingual engine JavaScript modules in your own schema, you don't require that anymore. Um, and you'll now also see syntax checking and feedback uh, when you go to compile um, your JavaScript modules immediately. So that should be a nicer um, developer experience. The other big change um, or update recently um, is for 19C. So a lot of these developer-friendly features in 23AI um, have been backported to uh, our 19C uh, release, which um, there's been, as you can see, there's been like 28 updates. Uh, the cadence is also fairly regularly, fairly regular. Tara is going to share um, links resources. Um, so you can actually see what exactly has been added for, you know, release updates one through nine on 23AI and one through 28 on, on 19C. But you'll see that the uh, multi-factor authentication feature in 23AI has also been added to 19C, which I think is huge. So um, for organizations um, that want to give uh, users access to their database, but they want to ensure that the person logging in is actually who they say they are. Um, you can easily configure um, the database when it gets a database connection request to send out the uh, request approval to your authenticator app. So for most of us, we're used to doing the, the phone or the watch or the face camera, you know, uh, gymnastics or the, the, the code that you have to input. Um, and then the database will let you in. 
this is really nice because it nothing's left to the uh, the database applications trying to make the connection. So for our tools, for example, we don't have to do any work for this to be supported. The database is handling all of the second factor stuff. So you can see this in SQL Plus and SQL CL and SQL Developer um, just naturally start working. Um, Chris and I talked earlier about this DBMS developer package that was added to 23AI that's been backported to 19C. So that's got some really nice metadata functions in it so you can learn more about your objects. Uh, they're lightning quick um, and the responses are um, really nicely structured uh, JSON objects and arrays. So really easy for developers to plug into. Um, Another example of adding um, developer-friendly features and, and being more closely aligned to the ANSI SQL standard, uh, create um, and drop if and if not exist clauses. So you get less of these uh, install and upgrade logs with lots of verbose messages saying, hey, your table's already been dropped or um, your tables, uh, you can't create your table because it's already there. You can just simply and add the uh, if or if not exist clauses and you'll just get messages back saying, hey, your table was created and hey, your table was dropped even if it was already there or even if it was already missing. Um, annotations, the ability to um, take kind of like the concept of uh, object level comments and, and put that on steroids. You can actually um, have your applications dynamically um, act differently at runtime based on you know this really rich uh, metadata that you can put in there for your database objects. There's some really good blog posts out there on that that were um, published for 23AI. You can now use that in, in 19C. Um, if you want to learn more about the multi-factor auth, um, I rarely recommend you read the blog post from the, um, the security team. Um, and like, I think I already said uh, Tara's going to have that in the links. That is it for us, and I'll kick things over to Sherry. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Jeff. All right, so let's see. So I come over from the, um, the generative AI OCI side of the house. And one of the first things that we would like you all to be aware of is that um, the OCI Generative AI Service recently uh, has started offering the XAI models, um, Grok. And this, you know, these models have, uh, you know, performed at the top of the charts in different categories like mathematics and coding and reasoning. And the advantage to accessing these through Oracle are that all data that's sent by Oracle to Grok models is processed on zero data retention endpoints. So that adds an additional layer of protection for your enterprise data, your very important um, data. Um, in addition to that, of course, there's the, um, oh, and that's something that you would not um, you wouldn't be getting that extra layer if you were to access the Grok models directly through XAI. And of course, in addition to that, accessing them through Oracle provides a lot of the, you know, that you can continue to use the same cloud credits. Um, you know, the, the process is um, much more streamlined. And of course, it becomes easier to use other Oracle offerings such as, you know, 23AI with your projects. Um, we also recently added the Grok 4 model too. So that is XAI's latest model to the OCI Generative AI service. And you can also see the other models and the, you know, the different versions by Meta and Cohere that we have um, added to keep things up to date for the OCI Generative AI service. And so moving on from that, though, also wanted to talk more about our AI, um, about AI agents from Oracle, and to really emphasize the fact that at Oracle, we are offering you a lot of choice in how you want to leverage the AI agents. So for example, you can build agents from scratch, you can leverage um, our AI infrastructure to do that. You can build agents using a set of um, pre-built tools. And I'm going to be covering this in the following slides in more detail. But you can also, if you want, leverage agents that are directly built into your applicate into the um, different applications. So, the um, you know the the Fusion Apps team is doing this, for example, and um, Oracle Health, and also um, H, um, HCM. Um, the I think I'm I'm NetSuite. All all of these different. Um, 
Oracle applications are making agents directly um, directly accessible to you. The service that I'm going to be talking about more though is the OCI AI agent platform. And so this is a platform that makes it easier for you to build the custom agents that your business might need. And it offers several different advantages like um, easier development of AI agents, customization and flexibility, and being able to start building that um, agentic AI foundation for your future for your future needs. Some of the tools that have been created right now are the the RAG tool. And so, you know, this makes it easier to use retrieval augmented generation with your um, with your data. There's a SQL tool that um, makes it possible for users to use natural language and be able to converse with their data stores. And then there are custom tools and the ability to, you know, use custom code, be able to leverage functions and APIs to um, add even more functionality. And in addition to that, this service does have other um other advantages such as orchestration and being able to um, create and combine uh, multiple tools and services. I will be showing an example of this on the next slide. There's also a multi-turn chat experience and being able to have agents that carry out extended dialogues. There's context retention so that the agents can remember what was previously said. Um, also, I think there, you know, there's just been a lot of talk about, um, you know, how how do I ensure that the agents are safe, that they're reliable? And so Oracle, in the service, we do offer guardrails that can define boundaries for those agents so that they offer, um, so that they operate um, responsibly and respectfully, and they really align with the needs of the business. They're not saying things that um, run counter to what you need. I saw one example of um, a car manufacturer that was trying to create an agent, and the agent ended up recommending um, their competitor when someone was asking for recommendations. And that's that's the kind of thing that you that you really want to avoid. Um, and of course, because this is built on OCI, it's designed to really scale with your business. It's designed to offer um, security, reliability, and also compliance. Um, now, this example here is how, an example of how you can combine multiple different AI services and also, of course, the autonomous database to be able to create a virtual sales agent. And so, this one uses our generative AI service. It uses speech. It uses um, and it uses, like I said, the autonomous database to create an agent that can a voice agent that can understand what is going on, be able to um, match that up with the data that it already its data stores, and be able to make sense of what is a confused order, um, and then create that order. So I'm just going to go ahead and play what this looks like. What would you like to order? Ah, uh, yes. Let me get fries and Coke. Make the, the fries large, the Coke medium. Uh, give me five Cokes and two fries. And the fries would have honey mustard and the Coke would have ice. So to confirm, you'd like to order two large fries with honey mustard and five medium Cokes with ice. Is that correct? Yes, thank you. Thank you. That'll be $25. Please pull up to the window. Yes, and now I'm feeling hungry, even though it's only 9.20 a.m., but, um, and that's perhaps not the best breakfast. Um, but so that with that, you can see an example of, um, you know, how, how voice agents are and how agents in general are starting to change the way that we operate and conduct, conduct business. And with this slide here, I just want to leave you all with the, I think another representation of how Oracle is offering agents across its organization. So we have an agent platform, we have agents by Fusion, NetSuite, we have agents that are um, being created and that Oracle is really the best place to come for your, um, your agentic needs. We just wanted to say a big thank you so much for joining us here today. And until next time, wishing you clear skies and happy coding.